What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again here with another fraction lesson. Today we're going to be talking about comparing fractions by finding common denominators. So let's split it open and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to compare fractions, finding common denominators by using the pattern method. But before we do that, let's go back and let's just review the symbols that we use when we are comparing numbers. Now these are all of them because there are a couple other ones you can use. These are called inequalities, right? So we have compare using greater than, less than, or equal to, okay? Um, and the way I remember this, we always read left to right. So greater than, your greater number would be on the left. That's why the alligator's mouth is going to eat the bigger number over there. And then less than, the smaller number would be on the left. That's why the alligator's mouth is facing the opposite way. And then of course we have equal to. So if we want to compare 4 and 8, obviously we know 4 is less than 8, so we would just say 4 is less than 8, right? Because we're going to read it from left to right, just like we would read a book. 24 is greater than 2, 13 is greater than 11, and then 6 would be less than 7. Okay, so again, we're reading it left to right. We're going to be using our inequality symbols of greater than less than, and then we also have our equal sign that we could use today. Here's our flow map of greatness right here, okay? So this is, if we're comparing fractions, we're going to ask ourselves this question up top, right? You got to read it um, like it's very, very important. Thou shall looketh at the denominators of the fractions first and ask, are they the same? So when you're comparing fractions, you want to look at that denominator of each of the fractions and say, hey, are these the same? Yes, if they are, then you can look at the numerators, right? So follow that arrow that says yes. If they're the same, then you can look at the numerators. No, if they are not, then we have to find an equivalent fraction by changing the denominators, by finding equivalent fractions for the fractions that we're comparing. We're going to choose to do this today using the pattern method. We have a video on what the pattern method is. Uh, we have a couple videos on finding equivalent fractions by multiplying or by simplifying using division um, or by using repeated addition, which is what we call the pattern method. So if you're not sure what that is, check out this video. If you need some extra work, hop out of this, go check that other video, and then come back. So here's an I do problem. Let's use our new knowledge to compare some fractions. So the question I'm always going to ask myself first is, are the denominators the same? And here I have 12 and 12, so they are the same. If the denominators are the same, now all we have to do is look at the numerators. What's bigger, 5 or 3? And obviously 5 would be greater than 3. So when the denominators are the same, it's very, very easy. We can just look at the numerators and compare them. All right, now let's check this one out. Are the denominators the same? So here I have a denominator of 4, and here I have one of 8. And the answer is no. So previously, we might have had to draw an area, two area models on top of each other, two number lines on top of each other, shaded in the fractions, and then compared them. But if we use our pattern method, okay, to find a common denominator, then this becomes very easy. So I'm going to do my pattern method for two-fourths. And when I do that, I know 4 plus 4 is 8, 2 plus 2 is 4. And my equivalent fraction for two-fourths that has a common denominator as two-eighths is 4 eighths. Okay, and you could have also done this using multiplication. I just like to do it using the pattern method because it's quick and easy. Now my denominators are the same. I can look at the numerators. What's bigger, 4 or 2? And 4 eighths is bigger than 2 eighths, so we would say 4 eighths is greater than 2 eighths. And if that's confusing to you, if you forget to which way to put the sign, think about an alligator. An alligator is going to want to eat the bigger number, so that wide mouth should be facing the bigger number. So there's a look at one where we didn't have to find a common denominator. We already had it, right? They're both 12. And then here's one where we just had to use our pattern method to find an equivalent fraction with a common denominator of 8, and we are able to quickly compare them afterwards. So here's our we do problem, um, and so we're going to be comparing 2 thirds and 3 fourths. So if it was a word problem, right, maybe I ate 2 thirds of a pizza, you ate 3 fourths of the same size pizza, who ate more, right? That's what we might be trying to figure out. And the question is, are the denominators the same? That's the first thing we're always going to ask ourselves. Here I see I have 3 and 4, so these are not the same. Now for this one, 4 is not a multiple of 3, right? So just like on our last example in the I do, we only had to do the pattern method for one of the fractions. For this one, we're going to have to do them for both. So I like to write them down underneath. I have 2 thirds and 3 fourths, okay? And I always start just by 
making four equivalent fractions. And then we might have to go past that, but let's just start with four. So I'm gonna skip count by three, and I have three, six, nine, 12. I'm gonna stop there. Two, four, six, eight. Now I'm gonna go to four because I know that 12 is a multiple of four. So four, eight, 12, three, six, nine. And I found my equivalent fractions that have a common denominator. Two thirds was equivalent to eight twelfths. Three fourths was equivalent to nine twelfths. Now, here's where you have to be really careful though. You've done all this work, you found your common denominators, you've gotta make sure you write the proper equivalent fraction down by the right fraction. So sometimes we might be rushing and we might write nine twelfths here. Well, three fourths was our fraction that was equivalent to nine twelfths, so nine twelfths should be over here by three fourths. And obviously if you do that, you're gonna end up with the wrong answer. So three fourths became nine twelfths, that's the equivalent fraction, right? If you ate three fourths of the pizza and then you ate nine twelfths of another same size pizza, that is the exact same amount, right? They're equivalent fractions. Two thirds, two thirds is gonna become eight twelfths. Now I have my common denominator of 12. I can just look at the numerator. What's bigger, eight or nine? And I see that nine would be bigger than eight. So I'm gonna say eight twelfths is less than 9 twelfths, which means whoever ate 3 fourths of a pizza ate more than whoever ate 2 thirds of the same size pizza. So this one's a little bit different just because you had to do your pattern method for both, but again, a lot quicker, a lot neater than trying to draw out those area models and number lines, although that's a great strategy. This is a little bit quicker, and it's going to help you when you get to adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. All right, here we have another we do problem. Okay, we're going to be comparing 5 eighths and 2 thirds. Now, this one, we're gonna to have to make our pattern method a little bit longer. The more you do this, the quicker that you're gonna to start to recognize what your common denominator is going to have to be. So for eight and three, I've been doing this a long time, so I know that I'm gonna to have to go all the way to 24. If this is your first time doing this, you wouldn't know that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do five eighths here, okay? And we'll do two thirds down here. And again, I'm just gonna start with four for each. Now, I always start with the denominator that has a smaller digit, okay? Uh, just in case I forget that, you know, it might be a multiple and I might only have to do the pattern method for one of the fractions like I did for that I do problem. So I like to start with that one, do four, and then go up and do the next one. So I'm going to do three, six, nine, twelve, two, four, six, eight, okay, eight, sixteen, twenty-four, thirty-two, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So now I have my list of equivalent fractions for each of them. I don't see any common denominators, okay? And again, it's not about the numerators. Right now we're looking only at the denominators, the bottom of the fraction, right? Denominator, D for down. So I see that I'm already up to 16, 24, 32 here, but I only got to 12 for my thirds. So I'm gonna keep going until I get to one of these numbers. So 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and I can stop right there because I found a common denominator, 24 and 24. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. I see my common denominator is gonna be 24. I found my equivalent fractions for those denominators. So five eighths, again, be careful that you pick the right equivalent fraction, became 15 24 Two thirds became 16 24 and now that my denominators are the same, what's bigger, 15 or 16? I see that 16 would be larger, so 15 24 is less than 16 24. So again, this one had a little bit more work, but the more you do this, the more you're gonna recognize that first common denominator. All right, so here we have a you try problem. Go ahead and pause the video. We're gonna be comparing four six and two thirds, so we want you to be able to find that common denominator for this. Pause the video, try it out, push play to check your understanding. Hopefully you just paused it. And so I see that six is not a multiple of four. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna have to do my pattern method for both of them. So I'm gonna start with four, six. And I already know what my first common denominator is going to be, um, but I'm actually gonna keep going and I'm gonna show you what happens if you find more than one. So I'm gonna start with four because four is a smaller digit than six. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. And the only reason I kept going is because I want to show you um, an, an, something neat. And so here I'm gonna do six, 
12, and uh-oh, I found my first common denominator right here. And I went, I forgot my numerator, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So my common denominator should be 12, okay? That's the least common multiple, so 4, 8. So it should be 8 twelfths and 9 twelfths. But if you kept going, because for some reason you're rushing and you missed it, so 6, 12, 18, 24. Oh, look, I found another one. 4, 8, 12, 16. So sometimes you might be rushing and you might pass the first one because you didn't see it. And you go to the second one and say, hey, look, I found 24 and 24. Well, I'm going to show you it doesn't matter which one you use as long as the denominators are the same. So for the first one, 4, 6 became 8 twelfths and 3 fourths became 9 twelfths. My denominators are the same. 8 is less than 9, so, so 4, 6 is less than 3 fourths, okay? So the denominators are the same. I went ahead and compared them. Well, let's say, again, for some reason I didn't see 12, and I used 24. So 4, 6 became 16 24 3 fourths became 18 24 and look, 18 is bigger than 16, so 4, 6 is still less than 3 fourths. It doesn't matter which common denominator you use as long as you did your pattern method correctly or you found that equivalent fraction by multiplying correctly and the denominators are the same. The reason we always stop at the first one, so I would have used 12, is just because it saves us time, right? We're finding the least common multiple of both of these and we're calling that the common denominator. And then once you get to adding fractions later, it's going to make it a lot easier if you just use that first common denominator that you find. But it doesn't matter, you still get the same answer as long as you find a common denominator. Thank you so much for checking this out. We hope this was helpful. If you need some extra fraction help, go check out our other videos. We have some awesome fraction songs. We would love for you to subscribe, like the video, comment, let us know where you're watching from. We know there's lots of different options online and we appreciate you choosing Instructive Beats. Again, thank you so much. Instructive Beats, out.